A very good evening to you and a warm welcome to our program, Business Today, your weekly business show on Channel I, where we give you an in-depth look at today's business landscape. It's time for us to move on to a personality clip. Well, today's personality will be touching on the Olympics and you will get to know why we're going to touch on Olympics on a business show. But first and foremost, let's have a look at who our personality is. Mr. Suresh Subramaniam is the current president of the National Olympic Committee of Sri Lanka. He is also the Chief Executive Officer and Director of Arrow International Private Limited, a leading trading company. Ranked number one in both singles and doubles in 1981, he was also coach of the Davis Cup squad 1989-1990 and captain in 2002. He was awarded the SLTA award for service during its centenary celebrations in 2015. Among his initiatives for the betterment of tennis was reinitiating wheelchair tennis for war victims as well as introducing tennis to hearing impaired children at the school for the deaf and blind in Ratmalana. Well, we are very honored to have with us Mr. Suresh Subramanian. A very good evening to you and welcome to our program, Business Today. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me. And we did mention on the intro that you are the current president of the National Olympic Committee of Sri Lanka and also the chief executive officer and director of Arrow International Private Limited, a leading trading company. So first and foremost, people must be wondering why the Olympics on a business show? So my first question to you would be about how Olympics is a business and your thoughts on it and how you would like to explain about it to the layman who's watching right now. Thank you. It's a very interesting and good question. It's not only Olympic. Today, sport is a business. Sport is attached to the tourism. There are a lot of tourists come. If I may say, starting with tennis, we had something like prior to the COVID, we had something like 12 international events for a year, for a year. That is every month one. The number of children who came to play participate in the sport itself because they all occupy the hotels and so many nights so sport is a tourism uh, to sport is a business and it's tourism as well now talking about olympic it's a huge business it's a huge business which olympics takes place once in four years as you know unfortunately due to pandemic it got postponed by a year so these are f five years running so all the television rights the sponsorship rights it runs into billions and billions of dollars so i think it is a business and i think sri lanka must get ready for that it is a big business exactly and has any country made profit with olympics that's a very difficult question to answer because when they originally when they start sports it's for get together friendship fellowship now things have changed. It, uh, now, if you talk about recently, or as far as 2000, Australia had the Sydney Olympics. Of course, they made money, big money, because they did not build new stadium. The existing stadiums, you know, the money is on infrastructure. That's costly. But if you market it the right way, now Japan had done very, very cleverly. They have done it again. The existing stadiums, they have 40 venues of which 30 odd are the existing ones, others are they call it temporary. So you see it's a huge business when let's put it like this infrastructure cost then which means that there are a lot of infrastructure coming in roads, you see transport, sponsorship money, then of course television rights internationally and the local sponsors. This is where Japan was very clever. They have a lot of multinationals and their own companies working in Japan. Toyota is one of the big sponsors. Then out of Japan, there are many big companies. I'm not sure with Olympic, but Toyota is one of the big Olympic partners. So they pay huge money. You see, one of the reason they postpone Olympic was if they cancel Olympics, the loss was running into something like 12 to anything between 12 to 20 billion dollars a loss a cancellation because you see the sponsors have invested money 
you had invested on infrastructure, you got to recover. Exactly, and every country would have invested on their players, their athletes. Of course, athletes. those are indirect. You know, it exactly. is Japan only. Then uh, what about the athletes, players? They all train, so it's a huge, huge investment. But if you manage properly, it's a huge profit. Look at we don't have to go far. Look at the IPL in India, making billions of dollars. And uh, how does the private sector profit out of this, uh, Mr. Subramani? You see, if you take Toyota, it's a private company. Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola is a private company, so all these sponsors today they know the money is in business, money is in sports, and it is. If you if you remember 20, 30 years ago, in in the Sri, uh, Sri Lanka SLBC Broadcasting Corporation, 7:30 they had a sports roundup. The sponsor was Bristol cigarettes. So of course now cigarettes are not involved. So at that time itself they knew sport and companies, so private sector, big time. Of course, countries, third world countries, you had to uh, depend on the government to put up the infrastructure. But once the infrastructure is in place, then you go to market it. It doesn't stop with the Olympic. There are so many other games coming back to back. So for instance, now once the Olympic is over, next year there is Commonwealth game, Asian game. So it, every year there is big events coming up. So you got to use the infrastructure that is already in place. So it is. Uh, it's kind of like you lay the foundation right, exactly. and then the rest will follow. Absolutely. And the Olympics is one year late now. As you mentioned very correctly, it's not cancelled but postponed. So, what are the implications like for the Japanese economy because of this delay? You see, first, of, first and foremost, I must say must thank the IOC and Tokyo 2020 for not cancelling the event. You see, the implication would have been not only for the economy, the ripples would have been worse. By postponing, the cost to the Japanese economy or it cost is about 3 to 4 billion dollars. Let me say that cost is due to once the Olympic was concluded and over, the stadiums were already have been given it out to the other sports stadium and the cultural center because it got postponed they have to cancel all the events that were coming after the olympics so which was a cost so they have to pay compensation cancellation so those costs went up to about three to four billion dollars you know those information nobody, nobody will know it's all guest guesstimation so it's those are the cost then on the other side, look at the athletes who are preparing, peaking for the four years, got postponed, COVID, lockdown, they could not train. So look at the some of the athletes, the companies who are sponsoring them, already they are bleeding because they no business, but they got to sponsor these athletes, but they are taken up a challenge to train them. So it's a, it's a huge difficulties. But Sri Lanka, I could say, we got over it. We got out of it because most of our athletes were went back to their homes from here. So they were training very hard. We from the National Olympic Committee, we were in touch with all these athletes. We had a lot of courses we did, you know, motivation all on virtual. So we were, were able to keep them motivated. So I, that, I'm sure everybody would have done that. So most of our, some of the athletes were training overseas also. Some of them had some issues. You see, for instance, our Matthew Abasing was training in USA. When they opened up, they said only for American uh, American swimmers and nobody else could swim because, because of the COVID. Because he represents our country. No, no, not because of that. Because of the okay. COVID. So, oh, so right. they were very careful. But he was living privately. Mm -hmm. All these people were in a bubble. Naturally, they won't like another athlete going and staying in their bubble so which is fair enough then when they closed the pool it was difficult for him until he went out and found a different pool and started training so you see others also faced but the biggest problem challenges we faced in asia most of the events qualifying events got cancelled so it was a challenge to qualify was a challenge what do you do you go overseas lot of countries were very worried we didn't have the vaccination but we managed it and i must at this juncture i have to particularly place on record the commander of the sri lanka army was very very helpful you know he went out of the way to make sure 
our athletes were vaccinated. Then the next uh, level, and they say you have to trace for three levels. So three levels, people were vaccinated so that we were ready. Exactly. So there has been, an, I mean, a many implications, not only for Japan, the host yeah. country, but whoever is participating yeah, at the you, Olympics you, you this can't year. put it down to money. It's mm -hmm. not only the financial, so many agonies, you know, parents were worried, the children will come back and train. We were worried that they will come back, you know, you're out of uh, training for six months, you are gained weight, you lost the momentum. So it was tough that they couldn't go out and train. Not only they went out of Colombo, they couldn't train in They there. should be able to get in touch with their coach. Yeah, so coach was living somewhere, exactly. so we had to make sure the coach was motivated. It's not easy. It was a tough journey, but we managed it. And Mr. Subramaniam, you did mention that uh, when you host an Olympics, there's a lot of cost involved in infrastructure. Then again, you need to uh, spend an accommodation for the athletes who are participating and the people who are coming in and all that. So with all those costs involved, there are countries which face loss as well by staging the Olympics. But why do countries still want to stage the Olympics? A host if, you, if I say a country like Japan, the Fede in their cap, you know, they want, they are superpower, they want to be up there. So one of the reasons, it is, it is, it is not the financial benefit, look, we hosted Olympics, look at China. When they hosted Olympics, all the infrastructure for Beijing was built only during that time. Every infrastructure for the Olympics. Whereas Japan, they didn't have to do, they only upgraded the existing one. Of course, countries make a loss. Unfortunately, Greece had a bad decision. Just before Olympic, there was an attack. So Greece, as a result, a lot of people didn't go. But it is not only selling of tickets and television rights. It's a tourism also. You see, I'm, I, was going for, um, I, am, I was going for two weeks. During the Olympic, I was touring Japan. I haven't seen Japan. So like me, there were a lot of people would have done that. So that has come to a standstill, but Japan could able to, the, of course, Japan could be able to face this. If you look at it, 2020, if I remember right, they had negative growth. 2021, IMF prediction is 3.2 percent. You see, so there is, uh, you know, something right happening with all the negativeness. Exactly. And uh, let's touch on you a little bit now, Mrs. Subramaniam. Now, we did mention that you have been playing tennis and become the champ as well. You've been coaching tennis. So tell us a little bit about how you feel like when you see or watch tennis at the Olympics. Yes, the tennis was introduced in 1988 into Olympics. Otherwise, it was not an Olympic sport. So the time we were playing, it was not an Olympic sport. However, still every player, now as I predicted recently, that Djokovic will be the second person to may win a golden slam, that is the four grand slam plus the Olympic, which Steffi Graf did. She's the only one who did. So as far as tennis is concerned, the top 48 in the world only will play. That is purely taken by the top world ranking 48 players. So everyone want to play and everyone want to win that. That's a great thing. It's not only tennis, everybody want to have that medal, you know. So as for tennis is concerned, if you are talking about Sri Lanka, we are far away from that, not because we can't do it. Commitment is a huge and sport like tennis is a very, very expensive game. So and you got to start from the age of eight or maybe even six. You need a huge commitment, something like 12, maybe even 20 years. Now today Federer at 40 is playing. So you can imagine you would have played at least 30 years of commitment. So it is not easy. So you need that kind of commitment. The challenges are huge. So the and tennis, like the other Olympic sport, played by the entire world. So it's a huge challenge. Exactly. So talent-wise, where does Sri Lanka stand in you tennis? No, you see, we have talent for all the sports. Mm -hmm. We have the talent for the all the sports. As I said, it's the commitment. That commitment must come not only from the child, the parents, the teachers, the coaches, then the officials who are involved. It's everybody must commit. Everybody. Uh, to produce a champion, it's not only 
not only one person it is the entire lot works behind the scene everybody is working then when they reach a certain standard then you need a physical trainer coach uh, you know dietitian you know so it is a huge commitment and remember it is an individual sport you get injured you are gone so it is an individual sport there is no backup you know like team sports like cricket basketball there is always also somebody always to a reserve. substitute mm -hmm. here no chance you are injured you are injured so it, it involves a lot of commitment as it is mentioned absolutely every sport has commitment yes and this as an individual sport i think it kind of has a lot more risk than uh, any other sport i would say yes lot of risk and also lot of commitment because mm -hmm. you tennis i train you one and one cricket the whole team is playing so you know the f there is more fun in that so exactly. it's very as i said you got to commit yourself a lot when you are involved in tennis so what does the future look like no you see how we look at it is we are they are participating in the game there is always as i say there is light end of the tunnel for a tennis player because whether when you start up tennis you can become a coach you can become a player you are sure of uh, getting a scholarship to usa so a lot of our tennis players have gone on scol and re return back and they are contributing back again to the game so tennis is one subject i like can talk a lot <laughs> because I, i am involved in locally asia international tennis federation so i have seen hell of a lot so tennis is is dear to me exactly but we we'll have to shift to the olympics once again since our main topic today would be on the olympics with the olympics happening in a couple of days so we understand that it has been delayed by one year because of the pandemic so the implications the athletes are going through as you mentioned yes about training and being mentally you see, being I am, motivated i am i am not predicting mm -hmm. but i feel this time the performance will be much lower than the last last olympic purely last one and a half years the competition were very little for an athlete to peak and perform you must have lot of competition lot of these guys one has to push another to go to the top or reach the maximum so that wasn't their last one and a half years just started so these guys whether they are they may peak but whether they will break any records i am not sure i am not sure we have to see in 2 week or 3 weeks time we are not far away so that is my prediction when it come for performance but of course everybody is trying hard and the winner will be on that day who has the will to cross the line on that is that is what matters how many sri lankans have uh, got into this uh, this year you know, we have nine players two swimmers both are on what do you call universal placement then we have 100 meter yupun who is been training in italy then there is a 800 meter girl who have qualified uh, also on wild card then show jumping christian first time for sri lanka and this young lady matilda carlson have been training in sweden then germany she qualified on merit then gymnastic milka she also qualified on merit as you know she is a number one in asia we got her trained in japan from 2018 i'm very honored and i'm thanks to the japanese uh, judo federation at uh, one of the meetings in 2018 we made a request particularly my secretary made a request to the japan you have to help sri lanka so fortunately the judo federation president said okay we'll train her so we she's very lucky so she was the best she had performed very well got in through pure merit then we have the rifle shooter again on from a lady so this time we have five ladies and four men Ladies Nine. are dominating this time. Yes, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> Let's see how it, uh, you know, the results would look like. Yeah, see, I always believe I am very lucky with sports. Mm -hmm. So we may have a outside chance. So let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. I mean, fingers crossed. Everyone's uh, trying hard. I think it's not just for Sri Lanka, the Absolutely. world over. So it's competition. 
and we'll have to accept whatever it is. But Absolutely. it's great to see them qualifying and uh, getting there. Absolutely. Actually, we have this time nine athletes and seven disciplines. First time in Sri Lanka, seven disciplines. Usually, how, m how many disciplines? Maximum do we, we have done is five. Right. Maximum is five because these two are new just come in. So next Olympic we'll try and get more. And how has the National Olympic Committee contributed to them in defying barriers? Yeah, you see, National Olympic Committee. Our main focus is medals. So as you know, I took over office in 2018, and after we took over, we had three important committees was brought in. One was the uh, high performance committee. The purpose of high performance is not to produce champions, to make the champions medal winners. So that is what was lacking in. So we have a high performance committee which works very closely. Then we have a junior development committee which concentrating on the talented juniors, which is very important. You see the sports in Sri Lanka revolve around three pillars, I always said, that is the national federation, the National Olympic Committee and Ministry of Sports. So I was able to convince the Ministry of Education in. So now we have four pillars. You see what happens? Our children, especially in school level, they are very, very good. But once they leave school, where do they go? They are lost out. So this is where we have got in bringing Ministry of Education in and we are making sure these children don't give up sp the sport they have given a pathway to go for the national level which takes at least three to four years there are one or two real talented odd ones who straight from school go to national level but it doesn't happen all the time yeah so we got to make sure you guide them so we have started the junior development program there are 24 athletes in various disciplines have been sponsored by us we are monitoring we are making sure you see they give us all information. So and we are brushing them up or we are molding them? From the them junior rather? level we are moving in. Mm -hmm. We are very, very keen. 2026 we have the junior Olympic, so th which is under 18 and below participate. So we are targeting that. Then we have another third committee which is also very, very important committee which is called the women's committee which looking after safe sport. If the sport is not safe, the parents are not going to send the children. For. So we had to make sure the sp children are safe, safe from everything. You know, sexual harassment is one part, but safe from everything. You know, bullying, you know, Mentally, all sorts of things yes. are involved, injury. So we got to make sure. So after these three had come and we are working very closely, we can see that we are going to win. But, I, you know, these are things you can't fast track. It has to go, it has to, we have to work slowly, steadily. And today, the technology has taken over everything. So through technology, you can identify a muscle which is weaker on a player. Unlike our time, when we played, only when you get injured, we knew the muscle was weak. Today, beforehand, you knew the muscle is weak and you start work on it. So you can prevent injury make sure that you know uh, if you go to international thing which i do whenever i travel i go and see these high performance centers how they work so we don't have but i'm sure we will have sooner or later and any hope for medals this time i am hoping all nine will bring <laughs> that is my hope that's everyone's but hope everyone's <laughs> hope but as i told you we have two who had qualified on merit first time in sri lanka to be honest, I haven't seen, and first time I'm going to see these children performing. So let's wait and see. I'm sure somebody, I'm sure a person like Niluka who is trying very hard, last two, three, four weeks, they are focusing, were trying very hard. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see, yes, and a few more weeks. A few more weeks. You're leading the contingent, Sri Lankan contingent. So how many officials are joining? You see, there was a wrong perception when you use the word officials. When they say officials, they always think it's from the National Olympic Committee or Ministry of Sport or National Federation. No. Here, when there is nine participants, you are guaranteed of nine coaches because each one has their own private coach. So we have to make sure the coach. So that alone, nine already there. Plus, this time for show jumping, which is a new sport, 
there are two people involved one is the horse and the rider so the horse has a veterinary surgeon the dietitian and the groom only for the horse same a trainer for the the rider so we were given only four slot these slots are not decided by us it de decided by ioc across the board for rest of the world they so know we applicable to not all. only to sri lanka or oh, not only for yes. and this time particularly because of the covid they reduce normally for a show jumper eight people can go the the owner of the horse there is a standby horse then you know again you have the, you know the each horse is looked after by different so this time it was not the case because of the covid reduced for then gymnastic we were given two slots like that each athlete was given one so really there are about 9 or maybe 10 going with that contingent then plus we have a doctor we have a chef de mission who has to then the village must you know the whole gamut has to go if a player says if i want to win and i want the entire 21 million people to come i must provide because you see look at that uh, 1964 olympics that karuna dasa was doing the 10000 meters if i remember right the poor guy was having fever so he didn't take part in the 5000 he opted to run the 10000 he was lap four times when he did the last lap, when he did the uh, one lap after everybody had completed they were hooting the stadium was hooting but he didn't stop what happened he was able to complete because the finally the entire stadium was cheering him look at if he can cheer our athletes why not but the cost is not on us if somebody wants to go we will certainly accommodate anybody to go you see the wrong perception is anybody who has to go for olympic whether it's tokyo any they have to go through national olympic committee so when they have to go through we had they have already done the sir you know so you don't they don't today no more visa they have so they are given an accreditation that only apply so if so the, the, we have actually you answer your question we have 17 people going which includes these nine nine players doctors as i told you and this time there are only nine no 13 media going without media we are nowhere nine from the print media and rupavani we are taking as official thing four we have to take them because that we are doing it for the athletes you know end of the day whether you win medal or not you are representing your country you are the best in your country we have to support them if you don't encourage them we you know sport is going to die so really so answer to your question totally 17 right and uh, who funds the athletes and the officials you see as i told you the athlete and the coaches were funded by the ministry of sports whereas i am going with my secretary as an official i all we, we fund ourselves nothing to do with noc privately i fund i so i always did that now we going we are very lucky if we get a chance of watching any other event because we have lot of side meetings we do lot of networking that is the only way sri lanka can go we are small country i am very proud to say we had something like out of 9 6 wild cards how many countries can do that because we have a very good networking very good understanding so we continue to do that because in the day we are doing all this for the next generation or somebody who want to represent the country exactly and uh, we've come to a latter part of the program as well but before that let's touch on how we get in touch with the talent in the rural areas mr subramanian because it's obvious that we have talent all around the island but some people have no access to anything no you see we have 34 olympic sports in sri lanka which comes under national olympic committee in sri lanka there are 70 registered sports with the ministry of sports that is this 35 plus another 35 non olympic sports all these uh, sports are run by the national federation so that national federation are the people who are in charge of each sports which i believe decentralized and they have now for if i speak for tennis tennis is all over the island all over the island likewise athletic all over the island so they come through the school system because they had the public school meet they had the jatika parcel 
so these are the school meets where you pick the talent up then how do you then you go to make sure you nurture this talent you see children today with this electronic you know this they would don't want to go out and play you know all of them want to do and today e sport is also very soon going to be olympic sport uh, yes, it was in the asian was games it's going to be uh, it's going to be an olympic sport and it's a 1 billion dollar sport so it's a big sport so uh, you see so through those systems only ministry of sports so it is ministry of sports and ministry of education together then only you can keep an eye on the junior guys because ministry of sport very difficult go to a junior school level and pick a child and come you can't do that so mm -hmm. it has to come through ministry of education so you see it's very funny ministry of sports ministry of education tourism ministry it's all involved today is big money sports is big money yes it is and as you did mention i think this should start from school level and it should continue so yeah, we have a very good school system working just that we have to you don't allow those children when they leave school you don't allow them you don't you got to make sure you guide them through in fact one of the meeting when we had this uh, function i told the honorable um, professor peris look you got to make sure that these children who are participating has a way of goes to university because every parent want their child educated why are these children going to usa you think usa taking us to represent their country no to push their standard up when top in the world comes and participate in university game their standard is improving so we should allow our children either night university or some education format so that these children remain here yes i think that uh, kind of happens to be like the main concern for the parents as well yeah, that yeah. they feel like okay when they get involved in sports they're going to miss out on their studies yeah so that's when they drop out yeah that's the reason because you see sports you can do only to a certain age studying you can do for a long a period of time you know i am one of them who has started masters now because i thought it's important to do ma masters with sports now after i got involved there's so much involved in sports so you can study at any age but at my age i can't play for my country who i much as like to do i can't do it so it's the system that we had to make sure that the sportsmen are recognized they are allowed to study or even night schooling so that they go for night schooling and daytime they train exactly. so if you can have that system i'm telling you uh, we can beat all odds looking forward to i think uh, this should actually be introduced uh, and uh, i think parents need good awareness on this so that they can help their kids because it's all about support from family and support from school support from yeah, universities because absolutely because uh, a child must know in the event he or she gets injured there is a fall back situation there are certain injuries your sport is gone so there must be a fall back situation then we can have a lot of champions come as a final your message to sri lanka as the president of the national olympic committee my message to the athletes to all sri lankans who are watching Lanka. the message to my athletes is i want them to go with the head held high and return back with the head held high and for sri lankan everybody you got to cheer team sri lanka it is only you who can make that difference so we must cheer each you see this time it's going to be live as the noc president and my team we have done everything possible to make sure it is telecast it is all every press is carrying so you get to know about athletes so you need to support sri lankans we have to rally around our flag then we will win what about the spectators this time you see they were originally having everybody then they changed it to only japanese now japanese spectators also been debarred due to the covid but today i heard they may permit 25% so every day things are changing so i was told the good thing is today though they said 25% then after that lot of the japanese people started taking vaccination so let's see we'll hope for the best and we can keep cheering absolutely absolutely and have a safe journey thank you very much for thank having me once again and i'm happy that you asked some valid questions particularly the misconception about officials traveling we have to go and our athletes have to be supported by the officials otherwise it won't happen Thank you very much once again for talking on the Olympics and uh, how important it is uh, to host a game of that sort in a country 
and about the current mindset of all the athletes. So hoping for the best this Olympics and whilst wishing you a safe journey. Thank you, th uh, we thank you for joining Business Today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And with that, we conclude this week's edition of Business Today. Mm -hmm.